Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Drew. What a day in Detroit. We have been celebrating the life and the legacy of U.S. Representative John Conyers by bringing you coverage of his funeral in Detroit. We have seen a wide array of speakers, everyone from President Clinton, who actually went and thanked Detroit, saying thank you, Detroiters, for electing Mr. Conyers to office 27 times. U.S. Representative Maxine Waters said, John Conyers helped me to know that I have a voice. And Monica Conyers said, don't feel sad for us. We feel sad for you all because now you don't have that person fighting for you. We have full coverage for you today. Paula Tupman is outside of Greater Grace Temple to bring you some of the most memorable moments. And Paula, it was just an amazing day and so many different unique stories. We were able to hear everyone from Mayor Duggan, from President Clinton. Everyone shared something so special about Mr. Conyers. Yeah, hi, Karen. And indeed, the funeral started at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, it's just now breaking up. You can start to see some activity, people coming out of the church. Believe it or not, they actually had to cut things short because of daylight savings time, and they actually have to get to the cemetery at 13 Mile and Ryan for full military honors, including a 21-gun salute that they're not able to do in the dark. They apologize for singers and speakers who weren't able to stay, but those who did shared very, very personal stories. When somebody served as long and as well as John did, it's tempting to make sure you list every last bill that he sponsored or co-sponsored or had something to do with. Former President Bill Clinton not only eulogized Congressman John Conyers as the longest serving African American in Congress, he said he eulogized his friend. I liked him, I admired him, and like I said, we had a lot of fun together over jazz, but and at the Detroit Auto Show. A long list of speakers at the funeral of the 90-year-old elder statesman, from state leaders to city leaders to... So we celebrate this man today. A music icon. But not to the level that we should have been celebrating him. The collective stories were told of a man who was smart, thoughtful, intelligent, and driven at a time when if anyone was driving, African-Americans were the ones sitting in the back. You have to remember what it was like then. That's what I tried to say then. There were only a thousand African-American elected officials, including local officials. We're talking aldermen and cities and mayors of small towns. And now there are 10 times that many. His work for the disenfranchised meant that it wasn't just the powerful who came to say goodbye, but those who couldn't fend for themselves, like Valerie Parker, who tried to open a school in Brightmoor and faced resistance. I lost the business, my home, everything. And I was on my way to a shelter, and he told his people, he said, come get, go get me. And he just covered me until I was able to get back on my feet. The people in the honor and color guard considered it an honor to serve him, their way of saying thank you to him for his work for them. John Conyers helped a lot of people. He did some amazing things, and we're very proud to honor him and his family today. As the funerals go for dignitaries, particularly one who served for closer to 60 years than 50, all spoke of him fondly and well. And to me... Yeah, certainly a funeral celebration with the mighty, the meek, and the musical interesting uh, moment was when uh, his wife, Monica Conyers, stepped to the podium, said she didn't have much to say, but simply paid, uh, excuse me, rather, played a recording of his voice. I don't know if those were his last words, but it was something to certainly hear that voice and certainly for those in the church as well, Karen. It was most definitely a very special moment, and there were many other special moments, and we will have full coverage throughout our evening newscast. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paula.